100 mile steel, and we've got here about some 20 gauge right here. All right, still on our alt tip because we're less than a sixteenth. We do a lot of car shows, so a lot of people always ask us how come we get very little distortion. Now, even on steel right here, if you butt it together, steel's going to go somewhere. You're going to get some distortion. So there again, even like stainless steel, we recommend a sixteenth to one eighth gap. Even if you get some big gap wells, a quarter inch, because of that soft flame, you can still weld those up. Now, these right here are just small coupons. Even if it's dirty, rusty, oily, or greasy, if you're doing fill welding, steel does a very nice job. I've got a piece here that's just a little rusty, and one that's clean right here. Now, for a lot of you guys that are putting cars, putting fenders together and so forth, give yourself about a sixteenth to a one-eighth gap and tack it about every inch, inch and a half. Now, sometimes when you tack it, one might raise up, one might raise down. On a very long weld like that, just go back and hammer it down, and then just come back. You can start on one end and weld it up. Now remember the great thing about oxyacetylene, especially if you're worried about distortion, is if you get any distortion because it is an oxyacetylene weld, you can actually hammer weld it out. It's a soft weld. For a lot of guys that are using the TIG or the MIG, it's what they call thermal shock in the metal. As you go in there and get distortion, you cannot come back and move that metal. It's a very rigid weld. That's when you got to come in there with your Bondo. So if you want very little distortion on your very, little, on your, on your very thin sheet metal right there, just come in there, give yourself a sixteenth to one eighth gap, and it'll do a very nice job for you. All right, so we're going to weld these two small coupons together for you, giving ourselves a sixteenth to one eighth gap using just a regular copper coated mild steel rod, a steel rod. If you got your MIG wire, just take that. Uh, we just did a farm show, fence wire. They use hay baling wire, coat hangers, the old standard reliable standby. But just a standard mild steel copper coating right there helps it flow a little bit better. It don't seem to stick as much. All right, still using the neutral flame right there. There again, just keep that little cone just up off the metal. And basically, all I'm going to do is just like my stainless steel, I'm going to take that little cone, walk up the rod, wash it right back into the puddle, moving it very little. So just take that rod and that cone down at the same time. Now, on my mild steel, I lay the gun over maybe close to a 45 degree right there, a little bit more than the aluminum, keeping that rod pushed right in the puddle. And see, because that flame is so soft and so concentrated, all your heat's confined in a very small area. And also because of the low pressure coming out of that tip, you have very little blow through. Now, if you do blow a hole, all you gotta do is just push that rod right in the puddle, and it'll fill it right in. Even on your longer wells, don't make a difference. You're still going to get very little distortion. Even on the end right there, if it sort of fantails on you, sometimes you might have to pull off of it for a second. Go right back on it, and you can build it up so you've got a very square weld right on the end of it. Now on that real thin sheet metal right here, you can see just how nice a bead you get. It's a very flat well, so you have very little to grind off. Notice also just how little distortion you get, even on a small piece, while at the same time giving you 100% penetration in case you want to come back and grind that off right there. It does an excellent job on that thin sheet metal. And not only your thin sheet metal, we can actually weld up to 3 eighths. And actually, once you start getting over about a quarter of an inch, you really start slowing down. The, the, the sticker MIG is going to weld your heavier pieces still much faster. But you can still take a small piece and weld it up. It's 3 32nd uh, mild steel rod or 1 8 You can actually even take your stick electrodes, knock the flux off, and weld a lot of your heavier plate. Now, when you start welding your heavier plate, it welds just like a regular torch. You must come in there and bevel your edges. Anything over one eighth of an inch, you want to come in there and bevel it out. You got to get both sides to where it's red, and then go in and weld it up. And also, when I'm welding my heavier plate, I'll use a little bit more of a circular motion. Instead of just barely moving the torch on my heavier plate, I'll just circle a little bit more, making sure that that rod melts down in there. And sometimes you actually might have to make several passes on it. Now, for a lot of you aircraft buff, I've done one ahead and welded one side right there. We're actually going to weld just a small piece of chrome molly tubing for you. Now, because our flame is actually so concentrated, now I'm going to set that lens down right here. I think we'll, you'll actually still be able to see right here if we set it like this right here for you. And let me see if we can get this right here. 
Maybe we can get it right here where you can actually still see it. Okay. Now, when you're welding your chrome molly tubing, especially with uh, a regular torch, they give you all different type rods. There again, I'm just going to use a regular mild steel rod with our torch. That is okay. Still using a neutral flame. This tubing is less than 1 16th, so we're still using the alt tip. Remember what size or actually what thickness of tubing you're going to weld. Remember, make sure that you get the right size. Now, just like a regular torch, we still have to come in there and just sort of preheat it, just sort of stress relieve it right there. You still want to come in and heat your tubing up. It's going to weld a whole lot easier. Now, one thing you'll find, find out about, because that flame right there is so concentrated, whatever angle you're going in, you always want it to heat on both sides. If it looks like all that heat is on one side, just adjust your torch a little bit where that heat looks like it's, it's heating both sides of your tubing right there while you're welding. And it don't make a difference what angle you're at. If you're coming back putting two or three pieces together, it's going to do an excellent job. And also for a lot of the guys out there that are a little bit older, a lot of times we have trouble with our hands shaking a little bit. Remember with this gun right here, you can actually lay the rod right in the puddle and just take it and work it right in. Now, on my chrome molly tube and also, I will take the rod and the heat down at the same time. Your metal, will you can actually see it turning red. And a lot of times I'll still use just a little bit of a circular motion. I'll just sort of wash a little bit of that rod off because I want to make sure that I'm getting a good, a good penetration. I know a lot of the air shows that we do, people... So that sure is a tiny bead right there. They're just so used to seeing a big, thick weld on that chromoly tubing. But just a big weld don't mean that it's better. You're still getting an excellent quality weld. Always try and keep that little cone right there out of your, out of your puddle. Now, you're going to have to learn to, to work that torch just a little bit more, working around a lot of your tubing like that. Just make a little more flexible right there with your wrist. So just get you some pieces and practice with it because you're going to be doing a lot of out, of out of position welding, which this gun still does a very nice job. The main thing on that tubing is always keeping that gun pointed to where you can see it heating evenly on both sides of your tubing. Now when you get through, especially if you're doing a cluster joint, you want to come back and post heat it to stress relieve it when you're putting a lot of weld into a lot of different joints. Now also if you're doing a reggette well where you got tubing sliding inside of tubing right there, you'll find that our gun does a much nicer job because you're not burning that tip off. Because of that concentrated flame right there, you still got total control on the outer side of that lip as you weld in the inside of it. So right there is your chromoly tubing. So now we're ready to go and weld some cast iron.